Chin. Welcome, welcome to Courtney and F. I don't know. I just heard the thing. This meeting is now being recorded. I know that's new. Hang on, I'm just going to get. That's right new. Here. We're being recorded. Courtney, where are you? There we are. I'm Cor back. Cor I'm back. Courtney is uh, adjusting the technical thing. Okay. There it is. Well, okay, right. okay, I started. Welcome to Courtney on Health on MalcolmPresents.com. And actually, I put this in, I always forget to see back shows and a history, go to MalcolmPresents.com and go to previous shows because Courtney says information that we have to know. Absolutely. We have to live by. Anyway, take it over, Max. It's all good stuff. So again, uh, so, uh, hi, hi, Courtney and hi, Malcolm and welcome to Courtney on Health which is a Zoomcast series about how to survive the COVID-19 pandemic, which we're still in, but we're kind of getting towards, I'm hoping the end of it. Yeah. Uh, and then hopefully we can change this whole sentence um, with tips on nutrition and exercise given by Courtney Gravenese, a registered dietitian with a master of science degree in nutrition and applied physiology. Courtney is an experienced nutritional and health consultant in the New York metro area and will help guide you on a path to wellness and health. So we are continuing the series on nutrition today. Uh, we previously covered from infants to toddlers and teens through young adults in their college years. Uh, this week, Courtney will focus on adults who are in their adulting years. Yes, that's in, the in thing. In adulting years? That's the name. They say adulting years. I'm not kidding. It's a it's an actual phrase. And uh, it's like millennials on up. And of course, seniors. Uh, so with that, here's a lyric from an old Frank Sinatra tune called Young at Heart. It was written by Carolyn Lee and Johnny Richards because I like to give them credit. And here it goes, Young at Heart. I'm not singing it. But not singing it. Not, not singing it. Fair, fairy tales can come true. It can happen to you if you're young at heart. Uh, for it's hard you will find to be narrow of mind if you're young at heart. And if you should survive to 105, look at all you derive out of being alive. And here is the best part. You have a head start if you are among the very young at heart. You have to sing it. <laughs> that was a cool, yeah, that's just part of the lyric, but the whole <laughs> lyric is really, really cool. Uh, so it's all in your head. If you think uh, young, you will feel young. Uh, we all need balance and moments of Zen to get us through the day, especially in these still pandemic times. With overbooked schedules, we have to take time to enjoy our surroundings, our families and friends. But your brain knows when it's time to go outside for a walk, to reach for that piece of dark chocolate, or to just take five to decompress. And we have to exercise and eat right and choose what foods we eat wisely. Choose wisely. Anna Thomas said, we all eat. And it would be a sad waste of opportunity to eat badly. This is especially important as we age, as our bodies need certain vitamins and nutrients that pack more punch. Uh, there comes a time when that midnight snack will keep you up at night with a gurgling stomach. And that's me when it happens. So you got to use common sense uh, because uh, eating and eat the rainbow of food to get proper nutrition as your metabolism slows down a bit. Uh, our nation's senior population is growing exponentially. One in five Americans is 60 or older and 12,000 are turning 60 each day. That's a lot of 60 year olds. Mm -hmm. Many wow. seniors are experiencing hunger and social isolation, which can jeopardize their health and well being. That's especially now during COVID you know, times. Yeah. The good news is that people are living longer. And a recent study by the German Center of Gerontology found that simply feeling and acting younger can combat the negative effects of aging. So I'm still looking for that magic pill that will keep me young forever. Uh, I think everyone else is too. Uh, maybe the magic pill is in the bowl of Brussels sprouts on my table. And maybe watching an episode of The Big Bang Theory or a Mel Brooks movie mar marathon would help because laughter does have health benefits. Well, I, I, I hate to be a sexist, but the male word would be Viagra. <laughs> 
Viagra. That's you're, the most you're, you're a strange man, Malcolm. <laughs> Malcolm, you are a strange man. That's just, you know, anyone out there probably knows already. So no, no, no but the, the thing is, I'll, I'll, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, wait, even, even with women and you speak to women and they talk about uh, you know, menopause, and during the menopause, they have different types of feeling, but they also lose their sexual urges sometimes, and, and probably Courtney can attest to that, and to feel... Yeah, no, well, we're gonna, we covered that in aphrodisiac, so... Uh... Yeah, yeah, but the funny thing about that phrase is it's called menopause, menopause. which means taking a pause from men. <laughs> That's... Well, well a quick, a quick, okay, never mind. I, can tell you. I don't know. We're going to get, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to run into trouble if we keep this up. Okay. So I'm going to ask Courtney, <laughs> how can we maintain a healthy heart and a sharp mind in our later years? Uh, and how do we stay young at heart and healthy simultaneously? Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's so interesting, you know, when you think about how our nutritional differences, um, lifestyle challenges throughout the age span um, are so strong, right? I mean, like you said, our, the number of individuals we're going to have in that 65, 75, people living into their 90s up into 100 is going to be greater and greater. And many of those individuals are stronger and doing more things than they could have ever you know, even dreamed of you know, decades ago. So you got to take care of what you've got. We are going to talk a lot about, um, at the end of our time today, about what COVID has done specifically. I don't want to, you know, really dwell on it too much, but it affects the whole isolation component of, um, as we age, what your social circle is like. Um, so, but let's dive right into, and it's going to be a relatively deep dive into the nutritional concerns that are very specific to older Americans, right? So, um, one thing I want to start with, because it's something, if you're listening for yourself or you're listening for a parent or a family member, um, the process by which we start to lose muscle mass starts a lot earlier than one would think. Um, so beginning at the age of 40, so 40, zero, we on average lose, and this is not just Americans, it's worldwide, about 1% of our muscle mass every year, starting at age 40. So the message I would really like to send home, um, in addition to the nutritional concerns is, whatever it is you're trying to do um, or are doing in terms of activity and exercise level, really stay the course. Um, you can't eliminate the muscle loss entirely, but you can to a certain degree, certainly slow that. And that becomes important later on in terms of your nutritional needs, how limber you are, how active you remain. So most people don't know that it starts that early. It usually, when I'm working with somebody, it's like that's a you know that's an older person's problem. It's not mine. But if you know that that phrase, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it, um, is very very key, very accurate, and does start like I said a lot earlier than most people think. So around that age, um, forty. Does this have anything to do with the decline of activities that uh, you know you, you don't like? you know, let's say men who are into sports, all of a sudden, like at the 40 or that type of thing, they're not out playing basketball or playing baseball or playing football. Their, their activities decrease. Is this part uh, of the, losing the muscle mass? Um, absolutely. Um, in, in overall, but it's also in part to physiological processes that are just happening as we age. I mean, the reality is there are different that occur as our cells mature, um, but it's not a flip of the switch. It's not as if, oh my gosh, you know what happened yesterday? I was playing basketball, pick up basketball, and now I can't get out of bed. Um, it's, a, it's a longer runway um, than that. And it's the same thing with a lot of our nutritional aspects as well. So um, some of the things we're gonna talk about today are B12, we're gonna talk about fiber intake, we're gonna talk about, and let's start with calcium and vitamin D because if you've been listening to our shows over the last few weeks, as we've been covering nutrition throughout the ages, calcium and vitamin D has been the common denominator among a lot of these age bands. No different when it comes to um, uh, as we age and as we get older. So we still wanna reinforce getting adequate calcium, vitamin D from whatever sources you enjoy. So if it's plant-based, great. If it's, if it's from an animal product, okay um, as well, but you must meet those needs, um, particularly as we age. Uh, bone strength is going to continue to be 
um, something that you want to keep an eye on um, as we uh, get older. Fiber intake. Um, dietary changes, um, uh, you know, preferences, tastes, the way food tastes, um, tastes, all affect what we're going to, you know, are purchasing and what we're going to be making at home. So we do see that there's a decrease in um, fiber intake, which of course leads to, where am I going to go with this? I, as a dietitian, I can't seem to get away not talking about, you know, poop uh, and going to the bathroom. <laughs> the reality is constipation is a big issue. Um, I feel like it starts, you know, little um, and it rears its ugly head again um, um, as we get older. So Malcolm, to your point, activity level is key. If you're not stirring that pot on a regular basis with some kind of activity, and notice I said activity, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a kickboxing, you know, kickboxing class activity, that certainly helps keep things moving. Hydration level is key. We'll talk about that in a, in a quick second. Um, and fiber intake. So you really wanna make sure that fiber intake remains a high priority Best way to get that, that fruit and vegetable intake, um, you know, five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables on a daily basis, nuts, seeds, things that have that good quality and only from plants, guys, okay? Fiber only is only gonna be in a plant source. Um, so you have to find a way to, um, to meet that need. Hydration is interesting because we do know from a variety of uh, research studies that as we age, our ability to sense thirst and to really adjust our um, sensitivity to thirst is, um, is not as keen. The problem with that is we're just not staying as well hydrated as we should be. So if you're increasing fiber intake and you're not increasing fluid intake along with that, you're worsening your constipation. So all that fiber is getting stuck and you don't have enough water to kind of keep things moving. Yeah, does, it have to be, does it have to be water only? Can it be, at what's counted because I'm curious about that. I mean, I have a couple of cups of coffee. I'll have some tea. I'll have juice watered down. I mean, right. what 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 will be the best thing to to count? It, um, it all counts towards it. I do want to say. I mean, there used to be a time that it was okay. So if you're having a cup of caffeinated beverage, coffee, tea, whatever, you should really back that up with a glass of something that's not caffeinated to combat the um, diuretic effect of caffeine. But really right now they're moving a little bit away from that. I mean, I wouldn't suggest somebody drink, you know, tea and coffee all day long, um, but certainly that fluid contributes to um, your needs for the day. Uh, best choices of course would be things like water, seltzer, dilute juice, that's totally fine. Um, I, I mean, for some people it's all about palatability and that's why they don't drink. So I have a lot of clients who's like, I just don't like the taste of water. And it's like, okay, well, what can we do to help it out? Maybe some uh, splash of cranberry juice or orange juice, or maybe put fresh, you know, crush up some pineapple and put it in there just for a little bit of flavor. Anything to help that process along to encourage drinking more throughout the day. Yeah, there, there, was, there was a book that I was, uh, I forget the name of it, but the, they uh, interviewed the authors at NPR and they were talking about we all show should have a, electrolytes with the water that drinking just pure water is not that it's good for us but not as good because what we do is we eliminate it all and then become dehydrated and she mentioned uh, electrolytes which I, I, I never could figure out what it was uh, well certainly if you are perspiring a lot and we'll, we can do a whole sports nutrition one um, you will need to really worry about replacing those electrolytes but I will have to say for the average person um, unless you're exercising for greater than well over an hour and a half and really perspiring, you're not losing those levels of electrolytes. So, I, you know, the best form of hydration is regular old water. There is a role for electrolyte replacement. It's just not in the average American. Um, so, and obviously you want, you know, water is inexpensive, but also keep in mind that things like fruits and vegetables, just like we mentioned, that those sources of fiber um, also you know, one of the reasons why they're so wonderful is because they're full of water, right? The cells that keep them, you know, that turgor pressure that they have are full of water. They contribute to your water stat, your fluid status, I should say, throughout the day as well. So you don't, don't feel like you got to choke back, you know, a whole gallon of, you know, regular plain water. There are other sources um, that um, are part of that, you know, that minimum amount that you should have. You you said in, in a previous shows of talking about energy drinks mm -hmm. and um, 
there are so many of those, you know, the Gatorades and, and all those other yeah. drinks that have the electrolytes that Malcolm's talking about. And it seems it's, it's, it's a huge industry and kids, you know, the coaches have the kids drinking it. Right. So what, what do you, what's a good thing to tell parents again about that? Yeah, um, like I said, and the, and the rule still stands. You got a kid out, like my son plays lacrosse. Um, you're out there in the heat that we had here, like for you know over an hour. I mean, that's certainly a role for um, you know uh, things like like Gatorade. And there's a whole product line of them. It's not just Gatorade. So there's definitely a role for them. Um, if your kid's outside and just you know throwing a ball around for a little bit. Um, the bigger message is make sure they drink more. They will feel more likely to feel the effects of dehydration and not necessarily just the electrolyte loss because you're not, like I said, you'd have to perspire usually quite a bit um, in order to lose um, uh, the amount of electrolytes needed to have like a drink like that. Yeah, yeah, fill me in again. What are electrolytes? Um, there are compounds in your body that regulate, most importantly, the reason why you don't want to get um, uh, dehydrated um, is it's for heart regulation. It's called the sodium potassium pump. Um, and if your electrolytes, sodium and potassium are two of your electrolytes, if those get out of balance, guess what? Your ticker is not going to be happy. So yeah. you can go okay. into the uh, um, arrest. So um, again, you don't want, I don't want to like, you know, oh, don't worry about electrolytes at all. You should worry about them. But for the average American, and what we're talking about today, um, uh, it's definitely just a better messages, you know, hydration from whatever source, providing it's not alcoholic and it's not a chronic amount of caffeine, caffeine all day long. Um, what, what, those, what, yeah, what's those, the, what, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, you can finish up. I just had a question about uh, the, the calorie needs of, of older people versus, you know, the younger folk. Uh, if you're not moving as much and what should your calorie intake be? Uh, so the, for, for a man, roughly, again, it depends on your activity level, right? So uh, um, a very sedentary male, probably about 2000 calories, maybe a little bit lower than that, up to about 22, 2300. For women, it would be about 1,800 on the more sedentary side, up to 2,000 if you are very active. So you really have to plug in your activity level. Um, but again, you don't count calories. It's just to give you an idea of the minimum amount of calories um, that, that would be needed. And of course, the, your weight is a driver. If you're losing weight, you're probably not eating enough. Um, if you're continuing to gain weight, you're probably over um, estimating how many calories you need um, and you should probably start to, to scale it back. We do know that we need fewer calories as we get older because we have um, less protein. We lose, as we said, muscle mass as we get older. Um, and I think you mentioned it, uh, Maxine, our muscle mass is our metabolic engine, right? That's what is our prime burner of calories is how much muscle mass you have on board. So the more you have, the more efficient your engine, the less you have, the less efficient your engine. So it behooves us to really stay the course with um, as much, not only activity that we're doing to preserve that muscle mass, but, and this is key, and this is for almost any age, what type of protein and how much protein you're having throughout the day. Okay. For a lot of reasons, we see in older adults, their protein intake just really falls off a cliff. Now, this is not a message to go overboard. What most people don't understand is more protein, not necessarily better. What you want is even protein intake throughout the day. Okay. Your body only has the capacity to synthesize protein into maintaining lean tissue, a fixed amount. That amount is roughly between 20 to 30 grams at a sitting, anything much more than that, okay, it may be going to other bodily processes. So for example, immune function, other things that protein is needed, but it is not helping with muscle. So when you're hearing these stories about excess protein, do protein bars, do extra, you know, more than that 30 gram-ish range, it's something you need to seriously consider um, not adhering to because this is sort of ironclad research with regards to how much our bodies can absorb at one sitting. Having said that, again, older adults tend to drop off for a variety of reasons. Protein sources get expensive, okay? If you're on a fixed budget, um, that's usually one of the things to go and then up 
comes refined carbohydrate and cheaper um, you know, energy sources like that. So it doesn't have to be a lot. Like we said, the, the research seems to indicate that roughly 20 to 30 grams at a, at a sitting. So that might be, for example, a couple of eggs. Um, if you choose eggs, piece of toast, maybe a glass of milk or, or, um, um, or, or soy milk. You can have yogurt. We want high quality protein options. Now your best um, the combination of amino acids um, are some of the things we just mentioned. They're in chicken, they're in fish, um, they're in beef. That doesn't mean that you can't meet those needs with plant protein. I don't want to send that message. You just need to pay a little bit more attention because your calorie load may be greater in order to meet that minimum amount of protein that's required. Um, so that, again, that actually, I mean, a, a big thing that they're talking about, which I started doing, they're talking about collagen to keep the the tone of the skin, because I notice as I'm getting older, the tone gets almost like cray paper, gets more wrinkly, even though I still have muscle mass, just the skin you itself. Remember, you remember Dr. Gravenis was talking about what happens. So there's topical collagen, which is one thing, which may or may, may be, there may be a beneficial role to that. You, there's gonna be no difference between the ingested collagen Versus, which is which can be expensive versus protein that you might be getting from nut butters, nuts, eggs, tempeh, tofu, um, legumes, beef, fish. So um, you do not need to buy expensive protein, you know, it, but it needs to be some type of nice, high biologically available protein um, for your body to use in order to maintain that, help your body maintain that um, muscle synthesis that needs to occur, um, you know, as we move through, um, as we move through the ages. Yeah, um, I, I know the collagen that I've been taking, I dissolve in water. So, you know, I get a, a, a eight ounce glass of You're water. getting your water with your collagen, huh? Right. So that, uh, I wanted to, um, to, to, cause I don't want to miss getting this in cause we started to talk about it before about, you know, uh, seniors and uh, going through COVID and uh, socialization and, and isolation question um, and how that affects the well being. you know, it's, it, and, and food insecurity goes in with that cause you know, yeah. when, when during the pandemic, you couldn't see your family. Um, and if you didn't have family nearby, who could maybe drop stuff off for you, you know, you, it's tough. So, yeah. so how does that all work? You know, socialization activity and, and, right. and, and being isolated or lonely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so even before COVID, we know that, um, particularly in certain parts of the world, the United States included, that, and I don't want to get the message that, you know, the elderly are disregarded and older Americans are disregarded, but we don't necessarily put the same emphasis on the privilege of caring for our older adults that perhaps other cultures do. Um, I'm going to do a blue zone um, topic a whole nother um, week. Um, but one of the things that we've learned from these populations, these areas of the world where people are living well into like their 90s and 100, is that part of that mix, in addition to nutrition and staying physically active, um, is the social environment. So part of that is um, family. Part of that is what are they doing? Are they eating alone? Are they eating with people? Part of that is their spirituality. There's a whole culture to this. COVID added a layer of complexity to this um, on top of what already existed in our country. Having said that, um, I think now that we're starting to come out of this, more people can get out a little bit more. Um, they're you know, able to go into the do their own grocery shopping again where they might not have been able to. Now keep in mind for some people on a budget, the option to get a grocery delivery you know, from Fresh Direct or whatever these nice places were was not an option for them because it was just too expensive. Um, so that became part of the problem. There's the problem of eating in isolation, eating by yourself. Now, if you think about it, part of the joy of eating oftentimes is the, the company, the people you're with and conversation and the joy you're bringing and you know, that, that is brought to the table. Sometimes that's lost um, eating by yourself. I'm not saying people don't enjoy eating by themselves every once in a while, but every day um, without that ability to interact, definitely, and this is one of the things we saw, is decreasing the amount of total calories that certainly these homebound individuals um, who could not leave home, uh, that was one of the issues that we were seeing. 
But then you're talking about the, the, the isolation of the, uh, of the elderly. That, doesn't that also uh, a factor as a type of culture we live in? Let's say we live in the city. You, you know, most people have apartments, small, smaller apartments, so they might have one or two bedrooms. There's really no room to take care of the elderly there. It's like uh, an agrarian society with some of the people that you read that live longer. They lived on farms. They lived on places where they uh, you know, had lots of room and they could put you know, their grandmother or their mother or the certain parts of the house and have them come in and take care of them. Everybody could you know, uh, eat dinner together. That, that, that's no longer true, in, in, especially in American society. Right, well, well, so well oh. I'm gonna have to cut in on that because um, I took care of my mom for 10 plus years from late eighties through upper nineties. And um, there's, there's a, a huge under the radar group of Americans, over 50 million that are caregivers for their elder parents and they don't get any help. It was, I mean, it was just to try to just get any help on any level was just nuts. So, I mean, something has to change there because, you know, I was lucky to be able to be able to take my mom to my house and I have space and I, and she loved being outside and she loved our company. But uh, unfortunately, when she got to a point that I couldn't take care of her, I had to put her in a really nice nursing facility, but then COVID hit and I won't even explain that. But, right. uh, but there is a, a huge amount of people in this country that are taking care of their elders. Absolutely. And they just, they do it because that's what you need to do, right? I mean, so, culturally, you're right, Maxine. I mean, culturally, for, I mean, for me, and again, I think it depends on, it's family to family. And there's a, this is no judgment zones here, right? We're not doing that. Some people, right. are, people live on the other side of the country and they can't do it, right? But that doesn't mean there's a difference between physically being in the apartment with them or doing it. But, you know, even if you live on the other side of the world of your, of your mother and your father, um, there's that connection that you can, uh, reaching out to them. What are you doing, mom and dad? Are you, are you eating? What are you eating? How are you doing? Where are your friends? What do you do? Is there a card game that you can do? Are you getting out to walk? It's that constant check-in. So there's always something. It might be varying levels um, that, of your involvement, but there's always something that can be done. Um, to help even in the smallest way. And sometimes that makes the difference is not feeling forgotten about. And again, um, I think that's part of the problem. That loneliness that pre-existed COVID was there. COVID put a ginormous spotlight on, oh my gosh, I'm alone. Um, and nobody cares about me anymore. Nobody wants to feel that way. And that's part of the whole psychology. You started the show, the top of the show is meant how do you feel your energy level what you bring if you feel good you're going to you know maybe feel better um doesn't it feel good to hear from a loved one or to reach out to somebody maybe you make if you are nearby make a meal nearby check on them something like what are they you know if you are close enough to be able to do it something like if what if, do they have, are they losing teeth? What's their dentition like? I mean, it may seem something simple, but you can bet that somebody's intake is going to fall off a cliff. If they're not wearing, the, if they wear dentures and they're not wearing them anymore, or because they couldn't see a dentist during COVID, their teeth are hurting and their teeth hurt so much that they're not, una they're unable to chew food. So you can see how COVID really added in that layer um, of something that seems so very simple. Um, but it's that kind of check-ins that, you know, is, is, is important, even if you can't get there in person, um, but helping in that, in that respect. Right. Well, you're talking about teeth to me is I, I see you know, older, older people, uh, you know, seniors, that's one of the t uh, aspects of health that's totally neglected. And that teeth cause so many problems as people get into their 70s and their 80s. And they have so many problems of chewing and hurting and infections going, you know, through through their whole body caused by their teeth. Well, one reason of that is economic, by the way, because dentistry is expensive and it's not covered under Medicare. No. And it's not under, covered under a lot of plans and it's it's it costs money. And a lot of elders who are food insecure or having economic issues, 
you know, it's a, it's a, it's it's a conundrum. I'll, I'll use that phrase. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it, there's a lot of things that need to be fixed, and uh, including my dog right now. But uh, <laughs> but but for people who have to, there's sparkles. Um, Sorry. One thing I would encourage if no matter what community that you're in, so first of all, there are lots of places to reach out for connection. If you are somebody who's living alone um, and you don't have family nearby, which let's face it, that's becoming more and more common, um, you can reach out to community centers to see what they might be offering. And they're opening up more and more every day. Um, so it might be outside, they might be running activities, but they're a great way to socialize, the great interact with people. Sometimes there's a meal involved. Um, look and see if you're on a fixed budget, if there are any programs running in your community where um, you can have uh, meals available to you, meals delivered to you. I know in this town there were, there were people helping with vaccinations. They're doing in-home vaccinations now for uh, people who qualify. Um, reaching out in that spirituality, maybe your church, your synagogue, um, maybe there's something, um, a, a group that's organized through those areas where you can interact, maybe share a meal as things open up a little bit more. Um, so there are some opportunities there um, for people. Um, again, they might not exist everywhere, but they are in certain areas. Um, and I think it's certainly worth investigating. They, they do. They, that, that's a great point because there's a, there's a, there's a beautiful um, adult day facility that, that I was able to, to, to go to with my mom uh, in Mount Kisco. And it's right next to uh, uh, a preschool. You know, they have it, it's, it's intergenerational. And um, they're actually growing food on both sides of the center now. Uh, one of the, it, it's, it's fabulous. And, yeah. and that's a, that, and all the, you know, the elders were together and then the little kids would visit them. It was like their grandkids who they never saw, couldn't see. The kids came in, you know, there's programs like that, that, that are really, you know, examples of what could help in this situation, I think. Yeah, so, what, what, yeah. what I find might, which might be helpful is especially for, for the elderly, is also to get involved with younger people or kids. Because the, the tendency is you get together with your friends or, or, or people who are retired. You, you, know, you look at them and, and they look at you and you tend to put yourself in, in a corner. You know, oh, I'm, I'm that old, look at my face, is wrinkled and I can't do this. Versus dealing with younger people who are doing things or kids. Because especially when you look at kids, you know, the, you see the smile on, on the grandparents, you know, the older grandparents, because they sometimes remember when they were kids and what happened and the, the delight that they take. But anyway, uh, if you believe it, we, we, we've run out of time. I know, goes fast. Goes, fast. goes anyway, too what, fast. What I wanted to ask you, Courtney, do you take, uh, do, do you do like uh, phone uh, hookups with people who want uh, advice on nutrition? Because, uh, you know, uh, they say in the New York area, but can you work with people in California or Alaska or Hawaii or any place? I, I can work with anybody you know, all over the world. Um, they, um, I would say the best way to probably, you can reach me directly if you go to my website and you can uh, reach me, um, you know, contact me through there. Um, or, you know, if you, uh, that's CourtneyGravenice.com um, or you can reach out through the Facebook and uh, private message me there. Um, I wouldn't necessarily, if you are going to uh, do it via Facebook or even on um, Instagram, obviously do not put any personal information in there. Just give me a private number and, or an email and we can connect that way. Yeah, because I'm thinking so. now, now with like what we're doing with Zoom, you can have one-to-one -one meetings with people all over the world. Just you know, doing the Zoom thing and advising them, and it, it's, a, it's a whole new world out there of communications. Absolutely, the telemedicine is the way, is the way of the future. Absolutely. Yep. It's, the, fu the future it's, is now. It, it's here. It's here. The future is here. So. Anyway, guys, wrap, let's wrap it up. Um, thanks for joining us for Courtney on Health. And as Courtney said, you can go to her Facebook page, Courtney on Health, on Instagram at CLG Wellness, and her website, CourtneyGravenese.com. For more shows, go to MalcolmPresents.com and the Many Shades of Green.com. And uh, remember, it's Courtney on Health, Smart Sound Nutrition, Strong Safe Fitness, and we'll catch you next time. Okay, and remind. Okay. I remind you, you also can go to uh, malcolmpresents at gmail.com to ask any questions that you want, which I will give to Courtney.
Okay. And well, because because uh, again, these topics, you know, need uh, many more shows. I mean, they're so wide and vast. Yeah, reach out to us. <laughs> anyway, have a great week. We'll see you again Monday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.